Unless you've been living under a rock since 1996, at some point in your life you will have heard about Crash Bandicoot, a PlayStation platformer focused on our wacky marsupial mate that brought me a lot of joy in my childhood and a lot of rage in my adulthood. Motherfucking piece of shit, fucking pig! The platinum for Crash Bandicoot is one that has always scared me given its rating of 9 out of 10 in difficulty, but I finally decided that it's time for me to face my fears and tick this nostalgia trip off my to-do list. For me to get this platinum as efficiently as possible, I've made myself a nice easy checklist to follow along with. Step 1 is to go through and do a complete run of the entire game. Now, since everyone here and their mother has played Crash Bandicoot at some point in their life, I'm going to skip past showing you this step. You can thank me by subscribing. After making it to the end and opening up a can of whoop ass on my boy Cortex, I had officially complete step 1 and beaten the game. Next it was time to move on to step 2, where I would have to go back through and get every single gem in the game, starting with the coloured gems. The reason I'm doing the coloured gems first is that they open up hidden areas in other levels. Without the coloured gems, I can't get all the boxes on the previous levels and can't get all the clear gems. Make sense? Good. In total there are 6 coloured gems in Crash. To unlock the coloured gems, you need to complete certain levels without dying, while also breaking every single box in that level. Unfortunately, because I'm an idiot, the first level I attempted was Slippery Climb. To say this was a nightmare is an understatement. This level is especially difficult with its hard spinning platforms, jumping off of birds, falls everywhere, it's just a recipe for disaster. Come on. Now I'll admit, while I played this level, I may have died a few times. And a few times more. Mm, no! <laughs> and maybe a couple more after that. I keep dying in the same fucking spot over and over and over again. And even started getting slightly pissed off. It gave me a pity checkpoint, are you fucking serious? Oh my god. But I refused to back down. After playing for an hour and a half and it hitting 5am local time when I was recording this, I decided that this would be my last run. And here's what happened. I can do it, I can do it. Please, please. Go fuck yourself, go fuck yourself, go fuck yourself. Give me that gem, give me the gem, give me the gem, give me the gem. Please, just get me out of this level. That has taken me an hour and a half to complete. I am done with this level until I have to get the relic for it. Son of a- After suffering through that traumatic experience, I had very little hope for the remaining five color gems, but they were surprisingly a lot easier and I smashed all of them out in about two hours. Yes, 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 please get me out of this level. Get me out of this level. Get me out of this level. Oh, sweet baby Jesus. Go. It's beautiful. Give it to me. Get me out of here. I made it. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Come on. I also unlocked two trophies while doing this. More gems are better than none for earning 13 total gems, and on cloud 99 for earning 99 lives. 
Once I had all 6 coloured gems, it was time to move on to getting all the regular gems. Up until this point I had already collected 15 gems, so there was only 11 left to go until I collected all of them and could claim the trophy, the ultimate gem path. Most of these levels only took me one attempt to complete, except for Cortex Power, which, because of its confusing layout, caused me to die over 40 times. But with most of these levels, there was very little pressure on me. I could die as many times as I wanted, there was no time limit. As long as I didn't skip a box, everything was fine. Overall, collecting the last 11 regular gems took me roughly 2 hours. The ultimate gem path. Oh, I'd say that's a success. Now we move on to step 3 and the sheer reason that I had put off earning this platinum for so many years. Step 3 required me to get gold relics or better on every single level. I loathe step 3. To earn a relic in a level, you have to collect this stopwatch at the start of the level, which puts you into a time trial mode. From there, you have to... RUN BITCH! RUN! While in time trial mode, there are no checkpoints at all, which means if you die even once, it is all the way back to the start. And this is where the rage starts to kick in. Now a lot of the starting levels were honestly really easy, with a lot of these only taking me a handful of attempts. Let's go. Yo! Platinum! Is that time? Gold. I literally just full sent it right at the end there, holy shit. I even unlocked the trophy Catch Me If You Can for earning my first 5 relics. Catch me if you can. First trophy. Okay, good progress. Unfortunately for me, this would only end up giving me a false sense of hope that this challenge would be easy. Sadly, Karma was right around the corner to prove me wrong, and it was about to be as painful as a swift kick in the old family jewels. Now I obviously can't go through and show every single relic that I earn, otherwise this video would be way too long. Instead of going through all the levels, I thought I would highlight the ones that truly brought me intense levels of pain. Because let's be honest, that's why people click on these videos. First level we have is Native Fortress. This was the first truly difficult level in this run and really put me in my place. Up until this level, there was nothing that had really challenged me so far, with all the previous levels taking me less than 10 minutes each. While most of this level was pretty straightforward, it was the spinning platforms here that really caused me trouble. There was multiple times when I would be on a great run, get to the last section, and... No, 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 there's no way, there's no way, there's no way, there's no way. I don't even want to explain how many times this happened, but after a gruelling 37 minutes, we finally reached the top. Please, please, please. Oh, thank God. Oh, Papa Bless. I'm never looking at this fucking level again. Jesus Christ, get me out of here. Next up, we have Road to Nowhere. Surprise, surprise. Little did I know at the time that this level would actually be a walk in the park compared to its dickish older brother that I would have to conquer later. This level would single-handedly begin my spiral into madness. I was getting mad at the wildlife. Listen here, fucking porky pig. I was even threatening violence on my own controller. I'm telling you right now, if PlayStation 5 controllers weren't $100, I'd be putting mine through the wall. But look, let's be honest. This level doesn't really need much explanation. You know why it's difficult? You know why I struggled. And you know why I got mad. So let's celebrate that I passed it and move on to the next. Time. Gold. Oh, Papa Bless. Oh, sweet baby Jesus, I never want to see this level again. Fuck this level. The next level that truly got under my skin was Sunset Vista. This level was frustrating for one reason only. It is so damn long. There was a time limit of 4 minutes and 10 seconds to get the gold relic, which meant there was a lot of room for error throughout this level where you could screw up and die from something completely stupid. Which I did.
At this point, I was already a broken shell of a man and losing what was left of my sanity. I turned to prayer for help on getting through these levels. Activision gods, if you let me get this within a decent time limit, I promise I'll never complain about a Call of Duty game again. Amen. With nothing seeming to work, I had all but given up faith. But I refused to be beaten. I got back on that metaphorical horse and refused to give up. When eventually... Get me. Thank you. Don't care, don't care, don't care. Get me out, get me out. That's fucking golden, I know it. It's a fucking... <laughs> that has taken me an hour and six minutes. It's in reverse, maybe I'll flip it. An hour and six minutes to complete. Fuck this level. Now we move on to the level that has broken so many people before me. The High Road. I was on this level for over two hours trying to get this relic. This was one of the worst experiences of my life. Now, two hours doesn't sound like a lot, but let's be clear. I couldn't make it past the start of the level for an hour, which meant every 10 seconds for an hour straight, all I was hearing was... Do you see how annoying that is? That sound is now engraved in my brain. I hear it wherever I go. It even got to the point where after an hour of playing, I had to remove my headphones because if I had to hear one more, I would have needed psychiatric help. If I have to hear Crash shout woe one more time, I'm going to throw myself off a bridge. But just because I had taken off the headphones didn't mean the level got any easier. Nope, it was still awful. And eventually, I needed a 10 minute break to figure out where I went wrong with my life. How could this happen? After taking that time to reflect, I jump back in and after 90 minutes of grinding, countless and a mental breakdown, I did it. Please, 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 please. I got fucking Sapphire. You have got to be taking the piss. I told you, this was one of the worst experiences of my life. Didn't I tell you? Now look, I'm a stubborn person, so I refuse to give up. I didn't care if this was going to take me another 15 hours. I refused to be bested by a bandicoot on a bridge in the sky. So I kept grinding, and finally... Please, please. Oh. <laughs> I am a broken man. <laughs> now after a brief call to my therapist, it was time to keep this train rolling. With a lot of these last levels not causing me too much grief, I had finally made it to the last level of the game, the lab. With a rush of adrenaline, knowing just how close I was to being finished, I jumped straight in and run like I had never run before. I was dodging. I was spinning. And I was blowing shit up. Reaching so close to the final hurdle, I was confident that this was my moment. After playing Crash Bandicoot games since I was a little boy, I had done it. My first ever Crash Bandicoot plat. You've got to be fucking kidding me. <laughs> this game hates me, I swear. I honestly had no idea how I was going to even shave off some time on that run. I thought it was perfect. But after some deep reflection, almost as if out of nowhere, the solution came to me. And by out of nowhere, I mean I looked up a YouTube tutorial. Shout out to PS5 Trophies, you're a legend. After watching his video, I now knew what to do to shave down those precious few seconds, and it involved a few jumps at the start, and spinning this creepy looking fella into some TNT. With this knowledge, I made my final sprint for the finish line. Please, that's got to be platinum. That's got to be it. <laughs> Practice makes perfect. Give me the fucking trophy. That would be intrepid crash bandicoot. Oh. <laughs> I fucking did it. That took forever. That last level alone took 
41 minutes. There we have it. Crash Bandicoot Platinum. Uh, let me know in the comments if you want to see the second one. I'd be more than happy to do it because I absolutely love this game, even though it tortured me and you can probably hear my voice is going a little bit. Thanks for sticking by watching the whole video. Leave a like if you liked it, dislike if you didn't, and subscribe if you want to see more.